What's up guys, it's Pliskin here, and I remember last time when I made my top 5 cut Metal Gear Solid weapons video, there was a viewer that wanted me to go further into detail about Metal Gear Solid Integral, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So sit down, relax, and let's go into the Metal Gear Solid game you never got to play. Metal Gear Solid Integral was released in 1999, and included a bunch of features not included in the original game. Now, Metal Gear Solid Integral was released only in Japan, meaning Western audiences didn't get their hands on it. So let's go ahead and run through a lot of the features that a lot of us, including myself, never really got to experience. First up, we got something that I talked about before in said older video, the MP5 SD. Now, Metal Gear Solid Integral came with a bunch of different difficulty modes not featured in the original. Now, of course, you have easy, normal, and hard, but in Metal Gear Solid Integral, you also have Very Easy and Extreme. On the Very Easy difficulty, Snake will start with an MP5 SD, which is an integrally suppressed version of the MP5 A2 submachine gun. Now, in this game, it behaves very similarly to the FAMAS, it's like a direct copy, except the enemies can't hear you when you're shooting at them, making the game a complete cakewalk because you can just mow down opponents and not worry about anyone hearing you. What I did not mention in that cut weapons video is that if you beat the game once and then start another playthrough, Snake will not only have access to weapons that we never got to play with, but there's also a first person mode within the game, meaning that you can look around, walk, and shoot and attack enemies in first person. A feature that I personally thought didn't come to the series until Metal Gear Solid 2, but here it was in Metal Gear Solid Integral. By the looks of it, I'd say it handles about as awkwardly as the first person mode in Metal Gear Solid 2 VR missions, because it doesn't really look comfortable and I can imagine using a D-pad to try to maneuver, shoot, and look around while staying in first person, but it's cool that it's here anyways. To activate it, the player would have to press triangle twice. I'm guessing that Kojima and Konami must have toyed with the idea of putting this into the original release, however, I'm guessing that the awkwardness of it all gave them cold feet, but then for Integral they figured, why not? Speaking about New Game Plus unlocks, we all know that Snake can unlock a tuxedo that changes the way he looks throughout the duration of the game after beating a playthrough. However, in Metal Gear Solid Integral, you also have an unlockable sneaking suit for Meryl. I personally think this is a great touch, I've always been into unlockable outfits whenever playing through games. And I feel like this would be a great way to make it seem a little more interesting upon the next playthrough. Also, I really think if this game does get remade, they need to include Meryl's sneaking suit in like all new graphics. Because I'm just picturing that would look amazingly cool, sexy, just mm, fantastic. A quick fun fact, even though this game was released in Japan only, the English dub remains there. I'm guessing that Kojima liked the English version of this game better than the Japanese version, so you can choose your subtitle text if you want it to be in English or in Japanese, however, all the voice actors and characters still speak in English, meaning if you got your hands on a copy of this, you wouldn't have to have a fan translation or anything like that, you'd be able to just pick it up, play, and understand everything. Now, one of my personal favorite features of the older Metal Gear games are the fact that saving is always fun because you have a really perky character that's there that's always saying something interesting, telling you a story, whether it's Paramedic in Metal Gear Solid 3 telling you about movies, uh, Rose in Metal Gear Solid 2 giving more insight into her and Jack's life, or in this case, Mei Ling telling you ancient Chinese proverbs. Well, in the integral version, she doesn't really do that. She instead quotes the great Western masters, one of which would be Shakespeare. So yeah, just picture that, calling up Mei Ling and her giving you Shakespeare quotes. This is very similar to cut content from Metal Gear Solid 2, where the save character was supposed to be this chick called Max that would do the same thing, with, you know, quoting Shakespeare and other, like, literary masters of Western civilization. I think this is cool. I'm starting to see a trend here. A lot of the prototype ideas for Metal Gear Solid 2 started showing up in Integral. Another character to get new voice lines in Metal Gear Solid Integral would be Psycho Mantis, who now can talk about certain Japan-only released games, one of which is a really big cult classic, I've never played it so I can't get into it, but certain people just won't shut up about it, Police Knots, another Hideo Kojima point-and-click adventure. 
But it's not just content that's right up front that was added into Integral. There were certain Easter egg-like or secret messages and features that were included in this version that we didn't get in the original one. One of which being that if you called 140.66 frequency in certain areas, you could hear hidden music tracks. One of which is Zanzibar Breeze, which is pretty freaking cool. I'll let it play a little bit here. Hopefully I don't get uh, demonetized or copy striked. Now, if music isn't really your thing, you can also put in 140.07 and see secret messages from the devs. Now, none of these messages are really voiced out and they're written just in Japanese, so I'm not sure how the translation would work. I'm not sure if you put the game into English, you'd be able to read them in English, but yeah, these messages are there, so it's pretty cool, I guess. Now, I've saved the best feature added into Metal Gear Solid Integral for last. Now, did you know that in this version of the game, you can actually play as Grey Fox? Yeah, it's, it's pretty freaking wild. Now, while normally you would achieve this by getting high rankings and completing the game on anything higher than easy difficulty, there's another way to unlock these modes, which is actually pretty freaking weird. So there was this thing called a pocket station, which I guess was big in Japan or something, like Sony's first attempt at something portable, and basically Naomi would give you this side quest to go find other people with pocket stations and then interchange code names with them, and if you do this five times, you get to unlock the Grey Fox missions. I just want to say this is like one of the most Kojima things to do, to add like a meta layer where you actually have to go out and interact with other people who play the game in order to unlock certain features. It's really freaking weird when I look at it though. Honestly, like seeing these flashing images makes me think of like old internet creepypastas, but yeah, it's cool that this happened. The Grey Fox missions themselves are in no way just tacked on there. You can have like this super high jump, you have the sword that's thrown in there. It's like a completely different gameplay style, almost like it's running on a different game. Like if you look at the footage here, it doesn't look like your traditional Metal Gear control scheme or movement animation. So you get this fully fleshed Grey Fox mode added into the game that almost feels like a completely different game. It's pretty freaking cool. I'm not really that sure why Metal Gear Solid Integral was never released in the West. Like as far as I know, Metal Gear Solid did pretty freaking great for the PlayStation, almost becoming a console seller. And you know, I, I'm pretty sure if they released this in 1999, people would have bought it, kind of like a director's cut sort of thing, right? However, if there's one silver lining from this, we might not ever be able to play Integral. However, if Metal Gear Solid 1 does get remade, it's clear that the version that will get remade is actually Integral and not the one that we're used to. The reason I'm so confident in saying this is the fact that the Twin Snakes, the only known remake of Metal Gear Solid 1 officially released, features a lot of these cut content from Integral. Now, not everything is in there, but it's clear that the devs know that Integral has features that players do want to see and things that we want to experience. So if this game really is getting a remake, I'd say expect to see Meryl in a sneaking suit, maybe we'll get an MP5 SD, and who knows, maybe we'll get our own weird version of Naomi's spin-off side quest where we have to use our phones or something to unlock secret content. Maybe it's Grey Fox missions, maybe it's something else completely. Either way, Integral definitely made its mark on the Metal Gear series, pioneering a lot of the features that are standard today. And it's straight up a damn shame that a lot of Western players never really got to get their hands on this. I know you can emulate this on a PC and I know there's people out there that have jailbroken PS1s or Japanese PS1s, but the majority of us have never gotten our hands on this. So I really hope we get to see this in a remake. Either way guys, did you learn something new? Did you already know about Integral? Or did I miss something out that was like featured in Integral that I didn't bring up in this video? Let me know down in the comments below. Like and subscribe. This has been Pliskin, over and out.